Okay, so Wolves take on Aston Villa at Villa Park tomorrow at three o'clock. Football's back, finally, after one of the most boring international breaks ever. And I think this is a game Wolves should be aiming to win. You know, I'll go into Aston Villa a bit more later in a minute, but I don't think any of their underlying numbers are particularly impressive. And I think if Wolves want to push top 10 this season, these are the sort of sides we have to beat. Um, in terms of our lineup, um, obviously the back four for me against Newcastle um, nearly two weeks ago now, I think that was the perfect game to play back four if you wanted to, but he didn't. So I think it'll stick with his back five, which I, I'm perfectly okay with, especially against Villa. They've been playing back five recently. Um, so I'd, I'd rather match them up anyway. But I wouldn't really pay, make too many changes to the lineup. Obviously, keep Jose Sarr in goal. Um, I've seen a lot of people wanting Bolly to come in for either Roman Sace or Conor Cody, which I can completely understand. Um, but I don't think we need Willie Bolly in this game. Uh, I'll speak about it a bit later, but if you look at Villa's um, aerial numbers, they're not good. Like Villa aren't good in the air anyway. So we don't need Willie Bolly's height. And that back three, apart from the Brentford debacle, that back three has been perfectly competent. They all have their uses, and I'm in no rush to change it. Plus, with Jess and Mascara's injury and Willy Bolly's constant injury problems, I wouldn't risk Willy Bolly. So we've thrown him. If we throw Willy Bolly in too quickly, he gets injured. Then we've got no cover at centre back. Um, Semedo obviously keeps his place. I'd bring in Rainate Nuri for this game. I don't think Aston Villa are amazing. I think we can push higher at the pitch. And I like Marcel. He's a good squad player, good professional, but ultimately he's limited. And Eight Nuri is the future of this club. We've invested money into him. Why not play him, you know? Um, Jamesino has been our best midfielder this season, so you have to keep him. And honestly, on form, I'd probably you probably should play Dendonka. I think he's been perfectly good in the last two or three games. But on quality, you have to play Ruben Neves. And then I guess the big question is on the right wing. Who plays? Um, do you play Adama Traore, Trincao, or um, Daniel Pedence? And for me, it's... Well, Trincao is probably going to be out with COVID. But I think with the form Hwang and Raul are in, you've got two goal scorers in that front three. So you need a creator. And for me, Daniel Pedence, let's say Hwang and Raul weren't firing. I'd probably play Pedence because he has a goal in him. But Ad- Adamatory feels like he's going to bang at some point um, based on the, his performances in the earlier games. And I don't know, Daniel Pedence feels like someone who's perfectly fine off the bench. He's still coming back from that injury. It feels like Adama needs a run. And why not play him? This is the perfect game. That's the lineup I go with. And obviously Wang off the left. And I think that's good enough to beat Villa. You know, if, if you look at the Premier League table, obviously Villa are above us by a point. Um, we should be above them based on expected points. Um, but I think if you look at a lot of, you know, some of the underlying numbers in the key areas, I think we are better than Villa in a lot of areas. Obviously goalkeeper Emiliano Martinez looks like he might miss the game because of uh, him playing for Argentina. Which Martinez hasn't been incredible this season, not as good as he was last year, but he's still a very good goalkeeper. Um, not as good as Jose Sarr this season, who's got the best post-shot expected goals this season. So big up Jose Sarr. But that's a big miss for Villa if they do miss him. But even if even if Emiliano Martinez does play, I'm still not that worried about them. You know, if if you look at their non-penalty expected goals, they're the fourth worst in sorry, the fifth worst in the league. They're not really creating many big chances yet, which surprises me when you look at their front line. It's very top heavy. And you'd think that this would kind of be the opposite, right? Um yeah, and that, it's not, and they're not really having many shots either. Again, they're the seventh least in terms of having shots, so they're not a really potent attacking force yet. Obviously, Emiliano Buendia has not really kicked in yet. Same with Leon Bailey. I don't know if Leon Bailey will be back for this game, so you, you kind of have to give Dean Smith time, right? But they're not a really functional attacking unit. Like Newcastle have had more shots than Villa. I mean, they've had more sh- shots than us to be fair, but you know what I mean. Um, same with like key passes, all the all these like attacking metrics. They're down there with like Brentford and Norwich you know, and Tottenham, like low shot sides. And to be fair, Brentford and Tottenham have beaten us. So, you know, maybe that's the formula. But we shouldn't be scared about Aston Villa having loads of shots at Jose Sarr because they haven't really done it in any of their games so far. And maybe all things will change after the international break, but they're not like a potent attacking force. We shouldn't be really scared of Aston Villa's attack based on current form. Again, same as shot creating actions per 90. They're the fourth lowest. They're just not a terrifying attacking force yet. But known Wolves, they'll probably bag four goals past us or something. One thing I thought was interesting about Villa as well is when I think of Aston Villa, I think of like, you know, Bertrand Traore, Ollie Watkins, um, obviously Bendia, Leon Bailey, a lot of good dribblers. But if you look at the total distance, they've actually carried the ball. It's really low. Like Wolves are pretty decently high up. Um, what, 10th? Like Villa in the bottom three, they're down low with like Burnley and Brentford and Watford and Tottenham, you know, quite long ball sides. 
even Brentford, I know they did well against us, but they are a long ball, 5-3-2 kind of side. Um, so it kind of feels like, to me, Villa aren't really in like any sort of attacking rhythm this season, um, which is okay. It doesn't mean they can't score, obviously. You know, Brentford beat us and they don't really have many shots, but this is a game Wolves should dominate and should be having more shots. And normally if that happens, you win the game. Um, again, with pressures as well, they're not really a good pressing side. You know, if you look at the amount of successful pressures, you know, a lot of the sides that do have good pressure numbers have done pretty well against us. Um, but they're really low. And they're down there with Watford and then some of the big boys. They don't really need to press as much. So I think the one thing the Brentford game taught us is that we can't always deal with a press very well. But unless Villa have completely changed their tactics over the international break, they're not a side that does loads of pressing, or at least not successfully anyway. And they do press a little bit, to be fair, but... In terms of successful pressures, they're not that high. Um, one thing I thought was interesting was their aerial duels. They're the third lowest in the in the side, in the league. Sorry, and, this, and don't wrong, we're not incredible. You know, we're only a bit above. But this is what I was speaking about with the lineup. Like a lot of people want Willy Bolly in there because he's this big dominant guy. Like Cody's awful in the air. As much as I love Max Kilman, he's not very good in the air for someone his height. You know, I think he only averages like one point six aerial duels, which is pretty bad for someone who's like six foot four. But Villa aren't a side that are aerially dominant. We don't need to be forcing in Leander Dendonga just because he's good in the air. We don't need to be forcing in Marcel because he's a bit bigger in the air. We don't need to be forcing in Willy Bolly. Um, maybe if we were playing, you know, Man United or Chelsea or one of these sides that win more aerial duels, maybe that'd be fine. But Villa aren't that. They're not a big side, or at least they're not good in the air. So we don't need to be forcing bigger players in like Willy Bolly and Leander Dendonka. Um one thing is interesting though is even though they're not winning much in there, they are putting in a lot of crosses. Um, I don't know how many of them are aerial and how many of them are low, but they're they're like Burnley and Man City. Um, so maybe that I guess you could use that as an argument maybe to bring in some higher players, but they're putting in a lot of crosses and not really scoring many of them. So to me, all these stats just suggest that Villa aren't that impressive. Like I'm not saying they're a bad side, you know, they're they're a perfectly competent mid-table Premier League side, and I'm not saying we're way better than them or anything, but. This is a game Wolves should be winning. And they're not an amazing pressing side. They're not that good in the air. A lot of their attacking metrics haven't kicked on yet, which is fine. You know, they've got a lot of attacking talent to come in and kind of gel. But we're playing them at a good side, a good time, just after an international break, where arguably their best player might not even be playing. This should be a game that Wolves are, you know, aiming to win. It's a realistic win. It's a derby. It's a way. We need to keep this winning streak going. We've got players in form. And to fair, Villa got a good result before the international break against Man United, but... This is a game Wolves should be targeting and it's not like Villa are a scary opposition and we need to start winning these games. Um, that's just what I think. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, there'll be a reaction out after the game. And um, yeah, peace.